I'm going to just uh, pick. I'm just going to pick someone at random now. I don't want to penalize the people here at the front because I want to encourage people to come to the front. So what I tend to do when I do these things is go right to the back, the people who aren't expecting me to just walk all the way up here and ask them any kind of questions. So I'm going to get about three quarters of the way up here, as they do on kind of Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway, if you watch that. And I'm just going to randomly go, Leslie, what social networks do you use? I Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Dago. Good, interesting use of Pinterest there. Anyone else want to just chime in as I'm coming down here? Maybe Ross? Uh, Facebook and Twitter. Good choices. Anyone else apart from Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest? Put your hand up. Any, any very kind of exotic ones? We've got an REF guy up there. What do you use? The pub. The pub. <laughs> hey. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So bearing all that in mind... Okay. <laughs> Bearing all that in mind, um, using Mary mentioned the graveyard shift. This is probably the graveyard shift because I'm between you and beer. Um, I want to take you through some thinking. So I've been on board with Moodle since about um, October, I guess. Um, it was just after Martin asked me to, to lead this project. And so I want to kind of walk you through some of my thinking. And my hope is that this sounds like the most obvious thing in the world ever to you and really simplistic. That's what I'm hoping because then I've kind of done my job. If it seems complicated and a bit confusing, I haven't done my job. I'm happy to answer your questions at the end. And we might even have to take them to the world's best social network, i.e. the pub. Okay. Um, so the way that Martin describes or the brief that Martin gave me, I guess, was, was this a new open social media platform for educators focused on professional development and open content. Now, that's a quite a wide brief. There's many ways in which you can interpret that. Um, and so some of the things that Martin was talking about yesterday, some of the things that Mary's been talking about, all of these things are things that we want to be in Project MoodleNet. But we can't build everything straight away. We can't just kind of build Facebook in a week, you know, that kind of thing. Not that you'd want to, obviously, with today's revelations and this week's. So Martin shared this um, diagram here from my good friend Brian Mathers. Stick your hand up if you've ever seen Brian's drawings before. A few of you, thank you. Now, Brian's a good friend of mine. He's doing some consultancy with Moodle at the moment. Um, and you can see some of the landscape of things. And as Martin said, not everything's in here, but it gives you a flavor of the kinds of things that we might want to eventually have in Project MoodleNet. So on the left-hand side, if you imagine at the moment, if I link to you, where do I link to? If you've got your own website, I might link to your website. If you've got a LinkedIn profile, it might be that. It might be your Twitter bio. But it's problematic. As educators, where do we link to? We tend to link to things which we're appropriating for education rather than things which are education-specific. So some kind of profile which hangs everything together. That's what we're thinking about. But also on the right-hand side, some really cool stuff. Things like crowdfunding. Things like supporting each other using local currency. Things like tuning your dashboard and your feed and using openly licensed resources. So this was kind of the starting point. And just kind of to take you through some of the, the thinking. Now, you might wonder why I haven't been talking to all you guys. Why have I been talking to people kind of outside of the current Moodle community? And I guess one of the reasons for that is because, as Henry Ford said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. I need to make sure that this project ties in with all of your needs. But if I start right in the middle, then we don't go wide enough and kind of blue sky thinking enough to get to where we need to be. So I want to start way over here and bring it into the middle to meet your needs. I don't want to start in the middle, I want to start over there. So bearing that in mind, I've been talking to some of you while I've been here and I've added in some slides based on some of the conversations I've had yesterday and today and things like that. And one of the things I was talking to Andy, so where's Andy? Andy Field over there, and I used to be a history teacher, and Andy used to be a history teacher, and I know from when I used to use Andy's Fling the Teacher activities in my classroom. And we were talking about some of this, and I was trying to explain the kind of social network that I think we need to build here. And I was saying, well, we don't really want to build a social network which is for YouTubers and Instagram stars. That's not the kind of social network we're trying to build here. We're trying to build the opposite end of the spectrum, where the reason you want to use it is because of curated, interesting, and useful stuff. 
So an example of that might be someone like uh, Stephen Downs's OL Daily, which I get every single day from Stephen Downs. Stephen Downs is a great guy, and he's gonna give us some um, advice on this project as well. But I don't follow Stephen Downs because he's a celebrity or I want to know the intimate details of his life. I follow Stephen Downs because he curates on a regular and ongoing basis really good stuff which is useful for me. And I'm sure all of you follow people like that. And the reason you follow them is because they're cool and doing interesting stuff, um, but also because they're immediately useful to your life and your role. I can't believe that this blog post was over a decade ago, but a guy called Hugh McLeod, who's best known for drawing on the back of business cards uh, as gaping void, he said that social networks are based around social objects. You have to have a thing that you're talking about. Um, so you can imagine on Twitter, it's often Donald Trump. Um, Facebook, it's often what you were doing last weekend. Um, or whatever it is, you have to have something that you're talking about. So I want you to bear that in mind when I go into the, just some of the next stuff here. Has any, have any of you come across the social network thingiverse? Any of you come across that one? Okay, what, what, type, of, what type of social network is, is thingiverse? Uh, I don't know what type it is, but it's used for sharing models of objects for 3D printing and stuff like that. That's right. So before Christmas, I was in the Netherlands, and I saw some really cool stuff in libraries on 3D printing. And I've been thinking about getting one for ages, and I finally got one. It's not an expensive one, but I needed to find somewhere where I could download stuff to print off with my kids. So I searched, and I found this, this social network, Thingiverse. And there's all kinds of these networks. There's ones around crocheting and knitting and all this kind of thing. And they're not based around massive celebrities. They're based around people sharing useful stuff. So this person here, you can see at the top left with his wonderful pose and his beard, he has shared lots of stuff, including this stackable battery holder, which he has 3D printed in two different colors. And you can see that actually, I don't know how well it's showing up on the contrast at the back of the room, but you can see that 15,345 people have liked this, just like you can do on Twitter and Facebook and stuff. Some people have collected, so they put it into a collection. Some people have commented on it. Some people have said that they made it, maybe taken a photograph of what they made and how it was different. Um, some people have remixed it, so they forked it. You know, if you use GitHub, that kind of forking feature. Um, and some people have tipped him. They've, um, they've not only kind of said, this is great and liked it, but they've kind of donated money to him as well. So if you look at his profile, you might follow him because he's a really useful person to follow and you want to know when he designs new stuff. But you're not following him because like, he's a YouTuber or an Instagram star. You're following him because he's curating and making and doing really useful stuff. And it seemed to me that that's the kind of social network that we want. We want to follow each other, but not just because one person's an influencer. You know, we want to do it because they're curating useful stuff. Now, often, I used to work for JISC, I used to work for Mozilla, and often I see people providing technical solutions to what are essentially social issues or pedagogical issues. So I used to work on OER at JISC, I used to work on mobile and, and digital literacy, and I'd see people saying, well, the reason why educators aren't using OER is because we haven't got a good enough meta search engine. And I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure I've seen about 15 projects that have provide a meta search engine for OER. Now, the problem isn't that there's a technological solution. The problem, just like when I was working on Open Badges at Mozilla, is that it needs to be technological enough, but it also has to have that pedagogical and social component. So it needs to be a balance, the kind of sweet spot between these two things, these two circles. Um, so when you do any kind of product management, the advice that you get is that you should start with a cupcake. If all of the things that Martin and Mary and other th things that people have said about Project MoodleNet are like a massive wedding cake, a massive three-tiered um, wedding cake with all the stuff that we want, we definitely want to get there eventually. But we can't get there by just providing users with some icing or with just the board that we're going to build the, the whole cake off. We have to provide something which is useful right from the start, otherwise no one's going to use it. And so the metaphor I want to use is the humble cupcake. The Humble Cupcake comes with three parts. It comes with the cake, the icing, and the decoration on top. I love cupcakes. They're fantastic. So what type of cupcake are we going to build here? Because the, the brief that we've got for Project MoodleNet is you know, wide enough that we can start in multiple places. So imagine that we start with social networking. Is anyone here part of the OERU network? Has anyone heard of the OERU network? 
<laughs> okay, a couple of hands there. OERU Network, especially in higher education, is trying to encourage people to use open educational resources in higher education. And they, last week, launched an instance of Mastodon, which is a distributed, decentralized social network, which I use. I use Twitter less now, and I use social.coop a lot more. And until about last month, as Martin and Mary and Baz and other people will attest, I was convinced that this was the right way to go. We were going to build on Mastodon, on open standards, and all this kind of stuff. We were going to build Project MoodleNet on Mastodon, and we're going to build start on social networking. But I quickly realized that if you throw people into just another social network on top of Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and everything like that, people come in, have a look around, see that there's not much stuff there, and then kind of leave until you know, more people are going to be there. But of course, you never get that traction because everyone's doing that. So perhaps that's not the best place to start. We could start on the right with professional development. We could build a whole kind of area, marketplace, where people can share courses, and they can rate them, and then people can kind of, we can build up from there. But actually, I think the best place to start, and I'm willing to be wrong here, because I was wrong last month, um, is with resource curation. And I want to explain why. Resource curation sits in between the technological and the pedagogical solution. It's a technical solution, but it's based on us having social relationships with one another, just like Thingiverse. So imagine this kind of workflow. Um, the graphics are intentionally terrible because I did them. Imagine that you search. So I used to be a history teacher. Let's say you're searching for something to do with the Russian Revolution. So I type in Russian Revolution into the Project MoodleNet search. There we go. I've just typed that in, and I've got a million resources because it's searching across OER repositories, it's searching YouTube, it's searching paid resources, it's searching everything that we think might be useful to educators. Once you get there, you can do what's called a faceted search. You'll be used to this from things like Amazon. So on Amazon, let's say I'm searching for a pair of new jeans, as I was recently. So I search jeans, and I click prime delivery, 34-inch uh, waist, and blue. And it comes up with less, fewer options. And then I find the one that I want, and I buy it. Similar kind of thing here. I search Russian Revolution. I kind of narrow it down by, oh, I want a PowerPoint. I want it to be uh, about Lenin, and I want it to be about um, the October Revolution. And I find the resource I want. And the key thing, this is what we're thinking at the moment, is that you click that button, Add to Collection, which is such a simple thing. It's a bit like Pinterest, like uh, this lady up here was talking about. You add it to a collection. Because this is the kind of sweet spot between doing this meta search of all these millions and millions and millions of resources and randomly finding resources because you follow some people on Twitter. Serendipity on Twitter is great, but I wouldn't want to base my teaching and learning kind of career on it. Um, and searching OER repositories is great, but again, I can't always spend the time that I want to find the right resource. So curating stuff is a really valuable thing to do within networks. The thing to say about this is eventually, this add to collection button might be a, a, a little kind of JavaScript bookmarklet, or it could be a browser button, so that you don't have to go to Project MoodleNet to find the resources or to add the resources. Um, you can just go around the web, a bit like Digo or something like that, and you can add them from wherever you are. So it's not like you have to go somewhere to start your workflow. You can just have your workflow wherever you start, um, as it happens to be. So how is this going to work? That's, the, um, that's useful to me as an educator. I can imagine when I was a teacher, I can imagine doing something like that and, and creating um, little re resource collections. That would be fantastic. But how is that social? How is that social network? Well, there's a difference between a people-centric and a resource-centric social network, like we were showing with Thingiverse. And so the resource-centric social network starts with something like this. So you've got somebody, let's say this is me, and um, I've collected three collections of resources there, and you probably can't see, but there's some little hashtags in there. I made those a little bit too small, maybe. There's little follow buttons on there. There's a follow the person. Um, and someone comes along. Let's say it's Mary, because Mary's wearing orange, and I'm kind of wearing black. Mary comes along, and she looks at my resource collection one. Um, Mary's learning Russian, so maybe she's interested in the Russian Revolution. And she comes along and says, this is great. I really like these resources. And so she's clicked on me to follow me. And she's clicked on the resource collection to follow the resource collection. And she starts asking some questions. And we're having a professional dialogue, not about like, hey, what's the weather like? Like, oh, isn't you know, um, Justin Bieber cool? We're saying, 
stuff about the resource. We're having a professional conversation about this particular resource collection. So this could be anything. It could be, um, oh, uh, you seem to have tagged this with stuff to do with UK or English education. Um, I don't understand what level this is. You know, what kind of ages are you teaching here? And we're having a conversation, and it might lead to me then re-tagging this or adding new tags on to aid discoverability. So you can imagine now that when, I don't know, Martin comes along and searches for the Russian Revolution, now it's surfacing stuff which are within collections before you get to all the results. So all of a sudden, it's immediately useful to teachers because they can find resource collections which have been pre-curated by people who have been teaching this for maybe a long time. The other thing to say is that the, the profile can be what we call an MVP, a minimum viable product, uh, an MVP dashboard. So let's say that when you're logged in, now this is Mary now, she's logged into her profile, she can use this as a very simple dashboard. So here are her collections, resource collection A, resource collection B. She's only just signed up, so she's got a resource collection one, she's following mine, and you can see that she's following some of the people there. And the idea would be that she would use her profile when she's logged in as a dashboard to see what maybe I've posted and other people in her network have posted, and to keep tabs on what's being added, removed, updated within the resource collections. This is a really super simple thing, but I'm, right now I'm very convinced that this is a, a really nice place to start because it's immediately useful to teachers. So the question that everybody's asked me today and this week and you know, this month has been, well, when can I start doing this? If it was a cupcake, when can I taste this thing? And the answer is, well, we kind of need to build out the team first. I'm going to be advertising for a, a technical lead pretty soon. Um, and we need to make sure that we have the, the right people on board. We're gathering people's feedback so we can build stuff and get the kind of um, use that we want and then build things out from there. I don't want to build this giant wedding cake that isn't actually immediately useful to people. So we're starting with the cupcake. Now then, I'm not sure if this next image actually works, but the, the kind of brief I gave to Brian was, imagine Russian dolls, and imagine that we're actually starting with the resource curation, and then we're gonna put that inside a Russian doll, but the Russian dolls aren't Russian dolls, they're actually cupcakes. I'm not sure if that completely worked, and I said, well, the profile could be the person eating the cake. I'm not sure that metaphor works. But you can imagine what it is. It's basically starting with resource curation, getting that right as a use case, and then building out the social networking features and the professional development from there. So that's the thinking at the moment. If you're interested in this project, the canonical URL is moodle.com forward slash moodle.net, which takes you to the wiki. Um, there's gonna be a community call, which is linked to um, from that particular link and, and on the Moodle blog next Wednesday, and I've purposely had this after this Moodle moot, so that you might want to come along, ask some questions, bring some people along. The idea is to have these community calls every month as we kind of um, get people's ideas and start getting some traction for this project going. <coughs> My email address is doug at moodle.com, as you'd expect. So it is now 10 to five, this session is supposed to finish at, at five o'clock. I've got some time for questions. I've also got a bit of a frog in my throat, excuse me. <coughs> so if you've got any questions, any observations, um, any comments about Project MoodleNet as it currently stands in the conceptualization phase, um, please let me have them. I started uh, working uh, with the university years ago. Before that, I had no clue at all about the existence of Moodle. So, on top of developing, I could say, the useful stuff, I think, how could you make it also the awareness of this outside of this network? So the question was, um, how can you make this, how can you make this, uh, awareness, grow the awareness of this outside the network? Now, Martin and I have, com have had conversations about the name that we give to this. So the first thing I did uh, was to put the word project in front of MoodleNet, which Martin and I have had lots of discussions about, but um, we, we need to kind of test this out, whether MoodleNet is gonna be the right word for it. There's huge benefits in calling it MoodleNet because it's something which is first and foremost for Mo Moodle users, but also for the kind of the, the whole world, the public. Um, but some of the people I've spoken to is, are saying, well, actually, if you call it 
anything to do with Moodle? Will other people use it as well? So it's a really good question. How can you funnel people in so that they join our community rather than just use it over here and continue doing whatever they're doing? It's an open question. If anyone's got any answers to that, that would be great. I think we need to, to build it and respond to users, both within the current Moodle community, but also outside as well. How can we kind of draw them in? I'll go with Ray next. I haven't really thought about that before, um, so this is just off the cuff, but I think if it's, if it's called MoodleNet and it's great, uh, then people may want to use it no matter what they're using anyway, and that is great for the Moodle branding. So why not make it MoodleNet, make it great, make people want to use it no matter what systems they're using, and make it, you know, so it's, not, so it's got the name of the system in it, but actually um, it's, it's much more than that. I think MoodleNet is fine. Thank you, thank you. I think I like to, I like to um, postpone decisions until I absolutely have to make them, but we'll, we'll see. And it's also Martin's call as well. Uh, my counter argument is if you saw something called blackboard.net or, or canvas.net and you're a Moodle user, you probably wouldn't go there looking for resources. So that's my point about that. And the other thing is, is that are you hoping to repurpose any of the existing resources that are available from, you know, that's, that's online? And the other one is, is that so my gut reaction to what you said is that's very nice, but how do I get to the, one, how do I get to that good free stuff to download, and two, you didn't sort of touch upon the idea, and I know it's part of the plan, to allow uh, content creators to, using that horrible phrase, monetize some of their effort. Yes, yeah, so um, the, the crowdfunding element, the eight different elements, which you'll see if you go to moodle.com forward slash moodle.net, the crowdfunding element kind of requires that everything else is built. Because if you want the, the crowdfunding element, I don't know if I, how quickly I can go right back to the start of that landscape. Um, this one here, surfacing the collective need. So a bit like the blended learning consortium, you put some money in, there's a bit of a walled garden, um, and you get to build some stuff, the open version of that. So someone says, hey, we need a course on this thing. Uh, you spec it out as a community, um, you raise some money and someone builds it, yeah? That kind of thing, you need the community, you need all the tools, you need everything there. So absolutely, that, that's correct. I've forgotten your first question already, what was it? Oh, yeah, so I don't want to build, I don't think we need to build another repository, right? And, and base MoodleNet off that. Having said that, there are Moodle-specific resources that maybe don't exist in another repository that we might want to build another repository for and then connect MoodleNet to that repository as well as all these other repositories as well. Um, that's, the, that's kind of current thinking. Need to have a word with Brian. I genuinely thought that was an advert for McDonald's restaurants. <laughs> you don't recognize the Moodle M there? Oh, perhaps we need the little hat on the corner. Yes. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We need some color on that as well. It was just a quick sketch he did. Um, any other questions? I'm looking at the people at the back. I'm gonna come up there again. Um, I, I know you've talked about sort of linking educators into it. I think it's a really good idea. I'd also like to see there's a really nice model here for bridging that gap between the, the development community that's a Moodle and you know, there are people as developers that we follow because they develop good stuff that we use and that and I love to see maintaining that sort of crossover between that and actually making that a lot easy, easier to follow. That developer is cool. I'm talking about David Smith pretty much. but. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think we need to build this first and foremost for educators, um, and, but then definitely, as Martin said yesterday, like we need to make sure that we've got everyone in a similar kind of place. We're not artificially separating people. That's a really good, good point. Another question over there? I love the way I'm doing my own running here, Moodle, Moodle HQ. Hi. The relation uh, between Moodle.net, uh, Moodle.net, and Moodle.org. How is it now, and how will it be within a year? So we've seen Lord of the Rings, um, especially the bit where there's one ring to rule them all. Uh, <laughs> uh, Martin mentioned Moodle.org, and maybe folding this into that eventually. I think we've got a lot of work to do before we build out the social networking features of Moodle.net to get to the stage where we could do that. Moodle.net, as it currently stands, allows you to share courses, um, and that's based on kind of some, I think, I'm, I might use the wrong words here, deprecated Moodle Hub functionality. Would that be a fair way of saying that, Martin? Uh, yeah, um, well, I, 
so Moodle.net right now is a Moodle site with some plugins. It was this, it was this idea 10 years ago, seven years ago. That didn't, you know, this is the new effort at it, so a new stab. It will, that Moodle.net will go away, obviously, when this is out. Moodle.org forums, I anticipate, will be sucked into this as well. But the Moodle.org will be the open source development uh, community, if you like. So it's the tracker, the documentation, the, all the Git information, uh, all of uh, the, the, the plugins. That stuff is just .org. And .com is all the commercial stuff and the overview of the whole project. So, so we, I, I want to call it just Moodle.net, and we should reuse that domain, Moodle.net. For, for the main page of this. And I might have to do what my boss says at some point. Um, but <laughs> the, um, oh, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's really useful, actually. You know, if you've never met me before, it doesn't matter. Just, and it doesn't have to be a wonderfully crafted email. Just say, hey, Doug, have you seen this? I'm really interested in design patterns. I'm not talking about, like, you know, even like the UI. I'm, I'm talking about, like, workflows. I'm talking about, have you seen this really niche community over here that does this. Like anything that you think would be interesting and useful for this, um, one of the really valuable things I find from talking to people and just running this by people time and time again is that it helps me kind of refine what it is that we're doing. Sometimes I completely have changed my mind through talking to HQ stuff and the community and stuff. So this is only gonna be as good as the whole collective effort. If it's just coming out of my brain, it's not gonna be any good. So we need to make sure we're surfacing all of that collective need. And if you've got a very kind of niche use case, um, don't kind of hide your light under a bushel. Come and tell us about it so that we can help and, and support you. It's, we're gonna have to start small. We can't like build this massive thing. I need to build out my team. If you know someone who would be a great technical lead for this, um, we're not necessarily gonna build it in PHP. So kind of, you know, I know, it's shocking, isn't it? Um, do let me know. So yeah, come and have a, come have a beer, just have a drink. I'll be going here tomorrow. Um, and just shoot me an email or find me on a social network that already exists. Thank you very much. Now back over to...